Hey everyone, Sarah Allison here from Parenting in Abundance. I hope you are well. Uh, today I'm very fortunate to have the lovely guest, Nenef, Nenef? I'm going to get that wrong, I'll get my teeth wrapped around that one. Um, <laughs> he's here to tell us all about how he's managing to juggle building a business and raising a family at the same time. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Jeff and tell us a little bit more about what you do. Hey Sarah, thanks. The, the name is actually pronounced Nemeth but you pronounce it the way everybody else does. So I answered both of them. And it's, uh, my kids were telling me the other day about it. They're like, they always say our name wrong in school. I'm like, yeah, just, just get used to it. Or you can correct people the rest of your life or <laughs> understand they're making their best effort. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been a uh, husband and I've uh, been married for, let's see, it'll be 13 years this summer. And my I have three kids, I have a 10 year old daughter, an eight year old daughter and a five year old son. I've been a, a fitness trainer, a coach, a performance coach since 2002. So I've been doing it quite some time. Um, and recently I've shifted part of my business to working online with people, which is how we met and um, using technology tools to create better solutions for people because I really feel that we are, I'm, my industry, the fitness industry, the health and fitness industry is failing our clients and our customers pretty badly. And I wanna do something to change that um, and sort of correct that and, and make it more accessible and uh, more uh, and get better, do better for the people that we're supposed to be serving. Excellent. That's a really good philosophy there and great to, to go into any business, I think. So what would you say is the biggest struggle? Well, from when you started out, I imagine things have changed quite a bit. You've been in it a long time, so it's obviously there's quite a lot of change that's gone on. What's been the biggest struggle when you've been with regard to like trying to manage family and building a business as well? Yeah, I think, you know, when I started off, um, I was a single guy and my wife and I had just been dating for a little while. So it was, you know, I'd pick up clients whenever and work whenever um, in late night and early mornings and whenever. Um, so then as we got married and we had a family, that changed the schedule and the accountability and the communication portion changed um, dramatically. The business itself has changed night and day i mean when i started in 2002 people were reading magazines were where people got a lot of their sources from the internet was just a tiny little slice of what it is now there were no phones that we could access programs on um so there were you know there was there were much fewer websites there was there was a very little mainstream opportunity for someone like me to put a message out you know there was no social media networks at that time or anything so the the difference uh, the difference is, is changed night and day in terms of people now are overwhelmed where before they were seeking out information now they're overwhelmed with it um and i see that with parents in their day-to-day -day lives too just being overwhelmed with i mean you're bombarded with so many messages about what you're supposed to be doing as a parent um what you're supposed to be feeding your kids you know what you're supposed to be eating what you're supposed to be doing and there's just a lot placed on everybody um to the point of just being overwhelmed definitely <laughs> think uh, you've hit a nail on the head there it's um there is a lot of information overload out there and i think i think what you're doing in terms of um taking it online is actually it's about that quality control isn't it it's it's taking what you've learned, what you've experienced offline on the face face, cutting through all the, I want to say bull, but <laughs> <laughs> getting through all of that. <laughs> yeah. And actually delivering what works because what works offline is actually really powerful as of what works online as well. And having that, having that offline experience, I think is quite invaluable. Um, because many people come straight into online businesses and that's it. They, they don't know what they're doing offline. Yeah. Whereas you've got the best of both worlds, you've been able to merge the two. Yeah, and, and you hit on something important is having that online offline experience of meeting face to face with people and getting results and dealing and hearing with their hearing their struggles and dealing with that and creating solutions for for them. And that's where I see a huge opportunity as we've talked in the past about using technology and online 
um, and online platforms to deliver this knowledge. And what I see online of almost all fitness people are constantly talking about different tactics, you know, exercises and diets and this and that, rather than long-term strategies that they, that people can apply to their lives. And then how to make subtle, small changes over a reasonable amount of time so that those strategies can become part of their lifestyle. And we tend as an industry to just throw tactics and exercises and diets and shakes and supplements at people till they're overwhelmed. And then when it doesn't work, we just dump it on the client and say, well, you know, I created this perfect program and gave you all this stuff and you just didn't do it. You know, you made an excuse and didn't do it, which is true. They didn't do it, but we created an impossible scenario for them to follow through. You know, if we're asking, if I'm asking a, a mother of three that works full time to spend eight to nine hours a week doing her meal prep for her meals for kids for meals that her kids are not going to eat. That's a losing scenario. She may be able to stick with it for a month. She may be able to stick with it for six weeks, mm. but it's going to fail at some point. I know that scenario is not going to last for her. So as a coach, unless I'm just a lazy guy that's going to, that's just out to, to reach in people's wallets, I need to create a solution for that. And that's what the industry needs to wake up and start to realize. I think that's a good point. I think I can relate to that to parenting is, is that what a lot of people tend to do is provide the sticky plaster, the quick fix. Yes, this, this program will help you lose this amount. Yeah, it probably will, but you'll put it all back on again because you've not dealt with what's going on inside that made you put on that weight in the first place or whatever it was that, that caused you to become unfit or caused the problems within the family environment. So I think your approach whereby you're looking very holistically at someone, you're not just looking at the presenting problem, you're actually delving deeper because that creates a leech rather than, like you say, that sticky plaster approach that a lot of people take and the same and it, in parenting. <laughs> yeah. And it does change as you, I mean, in parenting, things change, your strategies change, your style changes as your kids get older. And then in, a, in, in my business, people's, my clients, my coaching has to change as they move along their journey. And there are, like you said, there are underlying issues with some people. There are things internally or structurally in their routine or lives that need to be addressed or sometimes they just address them naturally because they have a sound support system mm. and that makes my job really easy but a lot of people will start to run into and bump into the support system in which causes pushback and which causes them to fail as they're making they're making progress on their journey then they get pushed back from friends or family that you know, are dealing with their own stuff and are intimidated or for whatever reason by the changes people make. And I see the same thing with parenting, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I have a 10 year old and, you know, well, uh, you know, well her friends are getting cell phones and she's supposed to have a cell phone now, yeah. you, know, you know, what's the call on that? And there's reasonable arguments to be made for someone, a 10 year old to have a cell phone and there's reasonable arguments for them not to have one. So I think that you have to figure out how all this works in your philosophy and, and what feels right to you. And that's what my job comes down to in my business is helping people along that path, helping find the route that works best for them, not the route that works best for me that I want to force them to, because it's always at some point going to be a losing battle. Mm. I, I love that. I think, I think getting to know your client is something that isn't really done in your industry. And I mean that as no offense to anyone, but yeah. it tends to be that, I want to lose weight. Oh, here's a program. Do that. That's it. Whereas I like your approach, which, like I said, you're a person. Let's deal with the whole person, not just that one particular problem. So, with growing your business, obviously, going online makes a massive difference to a business anyway because hours change. Obviously, we're in different continents, so we're having conversations. It's very much time time changes. Um, how have you found that's impacted on? parenting or how have you found parenting has impacted on your business it's it's um it's like everything else it's good and bad and it depends on how you manage that and and good and bad i use is very relative because most things are just, it's just as we know it's just a change and how we manage it makes it good or bad when i'm working with somebody in australia or new zealand that makes life completely different because i'm dealing with a 14 hour time change so i'm taking a call at <clears throat> 6 a.m sometimes or at 10 p.m., uh, 9 p.m., so that they, you know, we can, I can fit into their schedule reasonably. The UK is completely manageable. I'm used to managing that. Yeah, it's only a five-hour difference mm -hmm. now. But 
Then as you work with people around the world, that changes and that's a, you know, I've got to be home on, you know, make, I have a call Sunday night at 6 or 7 p.m. because then that's a Monday for somebody over in New Zealand. So I need to talk with them at that point and make sure that their week is off to a good start. So there's a different, I mean, I think people in my business look at going to an online as a panacea to solve all of the problems because in my line of work, your schedule tends to be difficult. You tend to have dead time during the day, you tend to be busy early morning and late at night. And there's this idea that oh, I'll just fill up my daytime and just talk to people online and just do that. Well, you're creating a whole different scenario that you need to manage around your kids' sporting events, around school concerts, around time with your spouse, around the general day-to-day stuff that has to be done around the house. And that needs to be managed also. So that's that that's always a big challenge is that we anytime we step into a new role or add something on or take something away, there's that whole unintended consequences sequence that happens that you have to manage. Definitely. And then um, yeah, I think online is it's beneficial in so many ways, but it does come with its own challenges. And um one of the things that I love about being online is that flexibility that actually you can yes, you have commitments business wise that you have to do those, but you can you can pick and choose your schedule for a business and for for being a parent that those are two really really important things especially from, from from my point of view i think flexibility as a client as a service provider you've got to be flexible yeah <laughs> um, I mean, so what tricks have you learned <laughs> you know um i've a couple of things i've learned is is it's this has taught me a better time management in in tracking my time and then seeing where my time really goes and part of 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 that was looking at how I start my day, how I end my day. And since I've started doing this, I've created and, and, and followed some routines in the morning that I do that help me sort of get organized and get my day started mentally and physically on the right foot. And the same way when I end my day is when I have an evening routine that I'll go through that will sort of help me wind down the day and help me put everything in perspective and then look back on what went well, what I want to improve on the next day, and then moving on to the next, you know, moving on to the next day, what am I going to do differently? What have I learned that I can tweak? So all of that's been really beneficial for me schedule wise and mentally and looking at the structure and, and all of these tools or most all of these tools are I learned through workshops through people that I met online. So it's been a huge benefit for me personally. And then my business also, the structure has changed a lot. And I always tell people about social media that it's like anything else, you know, you get what you put into it and your friend list on Facebook and your Twitter feed is going to be, it's, it's up to you to manage that, the input you have, just like it's up to you to manage the food that goes in your body, the amount of TV you watch, all of those things that can either be good or bad um, or positive or beneficial or help you along your path or not. Same way with your social media feed, you know, that unfollow button or unfriend button is really your biggest control point towards making sure that the time that you're online and the input you get makes sense and is beneficial to you rather than just taking away. Do you find that having those routines has helped being a bit with being a parent as well? Yeah, it it has definitely positive mindset. Yeah, positive mindset and clarity and taking some time first thing in the morning, 30 or 40 minutes for yourself first thing in the morning um, leads you to being more mindful, being more present throughout the day because you've had that time for yourself. You're not longing to do these things. You've taken care of your body, you've taken care of your mind a little bit early in the morning. And then you know that you're going to do a wrap up later on in the evening. So you're more present, you're less distracted. Um, you show up, and this is one of those messages I, I, I try to get out to my clients as much as possible that spending some focused, directed, selfish time each day makes you better at everything else that you have going on. It makes you a better employee or business owner, a better parent, a better partner, because you everybody needs that time for themselves every day. And it allows you to be more focused everywhere else. You get more quality stuff done, even if it may take part of that time. And everyone says, I don't have the time to do that. Well, none of us have the time. We have to create it. But 
that time will sort of amplifies itself and, and allows you much more focused time throughout the day. Absolutely, I totally agree with you. I've um, been introducing something called the Miracle Morning for quite a while now, and it's made a huge mm -hmm. difference. Um, doesn't stop stressful things happening. It doesn't stop. Absolutely, and, that's, and, and to that's me, that's like you said. It's about how you manage your response. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that's in, in hearing how Elrod on a, on his mm -hmm. podcast was, was kind of started me down this journey um, of putting some things together, and I use a lot of elements of what he taught in there in in his book. Um, and that's a great book for some people. I've shared Isn't the book it? with; it's rather daunting. It's daunting to start mm -hmm. off with a, a morning routine that big, and so I tell people to start off like take six or seven minutes in the morning, you know, and do these three things. Yeah, or exactly. give them like three things to do for two minutes a piece. And then as you see the results, then you can start to expand it. But sometimes biting off this huge chunk is very intimidating for people. Yeah. And your body, I found my, and I started, I, I straight in thought, oh, right, okay. And my body rejected it <laughs> straight away. Yeah. My body was like, oh, <laughs> no, I don't think so. But a few days in, I was like, oh, no way. So I had to go back and just introduce it it's like 10 minutes then 20 minutes then 30 minutes and implement it like that so yeah that's, that's my personal experience with it so what's the best point from your point of view of bearing in mind having a family owning your own business how just how does how does it benefit your family the fact that you own your own business in your own time the the um the 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 benefit and the curse are both the same as the flexibility and the the flexibility comes at a cost of making sure that the flexibility with not having a paycheck is great and you're mm -hmm. technically only accountable to yourself but really once you become you go into business you're accountable to people always say they're like oh it's lucky you don't have a boss anymore and i always tell them like no i have 30 or 40 bosses depending on how many people i'm working with at that time because they all I owe, I, all, I owe them all um, certain things that I've promised them. So those are all my bosses. So technically the flexibility is great to be able to leave, to go to a school event or to do certain things and to manage my schedule. But that's also the curse because I have more flexibility then I have less accountability. And so I have to get things done and I have to be good and, and be diligent about making sure I get things done on time. Mm. Um, and done for people and it's easy to say oh, i have a light friday afternoon let me blow off my afternoon so i can go play golf or something but there's always work to do so managing that is is also you know knowing when to stop and to be present is also is also a, a, a challenge mm, definitely i'm sure a lot of parents can, can totally relate to that <laughs> but even if you're in a nine yeah. to five Actually, it's yeah, absolutely. hard to switch off because you, you might finish your job as in you, you walk out of the office, but that doesn't mean that your brain switches off. So I think I think that's just something for a life lesson really is, like you say, going back to the med meditation and all of those things mm -hmm. so that you can learn to just put boundaries in place. Just like you do with children's behaviour, you have to put boundaries in for your own behaviour to make sure that you manage and manage stress levels and everything like that so one last question before we go if you could go back to the start and you were first building your business before you had kids what one bit of advice would you give yourself i would i think the word i would use would be patience be patient and and be diligent about about staying in the same uh, sticking with the same principles that work. Uh, it took me a long time to learn that because of the industry I'm in and, and the way that, that my business is really good at pushing clients towards shiny objects. They were also good at pushing yeah. coaches and trainers towards shiny objects. And um, I would have, the, the advice I would give myself is to um, be patient and stay true to what feels right rather than what everyone else is doing because i lost a lot of years in the middle doing programs running programs sending emails all communicating in a way that wasn't the way i believed. i felt like it was the way everybody else 
was doing it. So that's the way we were supposed to. And those were, it was all a learning experience because it got me here, but patience and believing in yourself. And I think that's, I think that's sound advice for anyone, whether you are a business owner or you are a teacher or just a parent um, or a kid or whoever. I think there's a life, a big life lesson in there that I try to remind myself daily. Definitely. And I think that by doing that, you are modeling that to your children and your children will learn to believe in themselves. And ultimately, that's the best gift you can give your kids is to know that they can go confidently into the world believing that Mm -hmm. actually anything is possible i can live the dream thank you so much for your time jeff i really appreciate it it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you shared lots of valuable information and uh insights into the world and uh it's been a pleasure and i hope that the viewers get lots of information from that so thank you everyone for watching take care and see you soon thanks sarah